Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Behind the Lens with Carol and Prash, where, as always, we bring you timely topical insights in a box. So, I have a question for all of you who've tuned in. Who's wanting a change? Who needs a change? Who's hungry to make a shift in their work or their professional circumstances or personal circumstances? I have news for you. You are not alone. According to the Office for National Statistics, more than a quarter of adults, more than a quarter of adults are considering changes to their home, job or relationship because of their experience during this lockdown. You know, folks, for as humans, on the one hand, we crave that stability and certainty of certain things. And yet at the same time, we're creatures of variety. We want that uncertainty. It makes life fun. And yet here we are with an unprecedented time in our lives where sometimes change is impelled or compelled upon us. Carol, what do we have here? Yes, an interesting piece of research, a very interesting piece of research that we picked up. And I think that what the, what the pandemic has done is given us an opportunity to, to pause and to reflect. And obviously being you know, in, in isolation for the past, you know, in, in terms of lockdown for the past few months. And so it's an opportunity to look at our lives so, you know, the big stressors in our life are things like moving house, changing jobs. We know that those are big stressors. Right. And sometimes we've, over the last few months, we have had an opportunity to think to ourselves, well, do I want to be in the same relationship with the person I'm living with? Not necessarily so. Do I want the job, even if I'm furloughed or not furloughed or working back at the workplace? I'm not sure I do either. And do I actually necessarily want to live with the person uh, or, live in the, or live in the same person as I've been living with for the last 10 years or even in the same house? Maybe I'd like to move. So that's in some ways the negative, not negative, but those are the challenges we've had time to think about because if nothing else, the pandemic and you know being in, you know, in lockdown has given us time to think. But the upside of that is, is that let's look at the, what that's given us. It's not just negative stuff. The upside is we've had an opportunity to spend more time, albeit by Zoom, with friends and family. Um, IT certainly has come, you know, we've all taken ourselves way out of our comfort zone. I thought one time I could never manage Zoom and I was a bit like, oh yeah, why not Zoom? WebEx, of course, no problem in the slightest. <laughs> you've, already, you've, you've already got a job as a Zoom technical support. <laughs> Right. I sincerely <laughs> hope not, but I certainly have. Learned. But it, for me, it was a big thing. It was a barrier thinker. One day I'll use Zoom. And then all of a sudden it happened. Lockdown It's a bit like, you know something, Carol? It's today. Today is the day when you're going to do it. Yeah. And the other thing is, is I'm seeing people from my office window at home, of course, walking. And many, many more people are walking, exercising, albeit they're usually on their phones. I accept that. But at least they're out there exercising. So you've got the two things. You've got the research on one side where people are actually looking at their lives. Do they want to change? A lot of people do. And they're thinking about it. And on the other side, they're actually thinking, well, actually, this has been positive for us. Absolutely. And I think this is why, you know, it's a double edged sword. But regardless of how, folks, you're seeing this, and I'm sure most of you tuned in have some negative and some positive impressions that this current situation has, you know, left with you at the moment and perhaps now that you have to grapple with. Carol, what sort of tips do you have here to help people navigate through this? Okay. First of all, accept the fact that we are in a time of crisis and i know we're coming out slowly coming out but we're not out of it yet and probably not for a long while don't make a, a judgment don't make a don't make a rash decision don't do it at the moment because you don't want to do things on impulse i have count, i have clients who i see on a regular basis who are all saying oh yes well it's going to be the divorce courts and i'm saying slow down hold your horses that may not necessarily be what you want it may be at the moment because you're living on top of each other but it may not be longer term that's the situation second of all talk to other people talk to people talk it through write it down weigh up the pros and cons what it is that you want to do what is it good to move is it not good to move you just don't want to actually sort of do you don't want to make any knee-jerk reactions that's the most important brilliant <clears throat> and i think you know following on very nicely from what you said carol Folks, I want to add a couple of points again that hopefully will assist in this difficult time to what Carol's already said. The first one, and this could sound grand, but I'm going to say this. Now could be a good time to revisit your definition of success and purpose. 
See, like many people, you may discover that what, and maybe even who, as Carol said, that you've held as important in your life so far, may no longer hold true for you. Now, if that's shown up for you, then before making any big decisions, reevaluating your purpose and your success definitions will give you the reality check and a sense of renewed direction and momentum to help you to navigate and make those more wiser decisions. Secondly, of course, I'm going to say this, you know, as a mindfulness expert and a well-being devotee, cultivate better self-awareness. Better self-awareness by calming yourself through mindful breathing, putting on your favorite background music, right? It's not your happy jumping up music. It affects the emotional state. Just gentle background music, bringing yourself in a mindful breathing rhythm. Then have a conversation with yourself. Healthily check in whether the emotions or the desires that are welling up, that are triggering you, that are causing this desire for you to make that change, aren't coming from a projections of other people's expectations right or their own other behaviors or actions two you're not being triggered by some past trauma or some ancient wound that has been brought to the surface during this difficult time and then you're acting on this reactive type of approach and thirdly check that it's not your inner critic or your ego that isn't speaking too loudly hey listen we all have an inner critic and an ego but if it's speaking too loudly that's not great. And by the way, you can check out my podcast, Urban Spirituality, where I have episodes on both these subjects. So check that out. Ultimately, making karma balanced decisions that balance intellect and heart is what you need to do in order to make the most of empowering your inner dialogue before making that decision. That's it from me. Carol, any last words? Yeah, I think finally, which is at a time of crisis, we still tend to make decisions that sometimes we regret afterwards. Make sure you don't do that. Think about it. Think long and hard for the future. Is it really a relationship you want to get out of or can it be worked upon? If you're going through financial challenges, then maybe you can talk to somebody. Talk to the professionals. Speak to a counsellor, whoever it may well be, but somebody who will listen to you, make time for you. Think it through. before. Think before you jump. Excellent. Folks, we hope that those have been some valuable tips and ideas that you can take away and start to implement in your life or for the lives of somebody that you know or one of your team. As always, leave your own comments, tips and insights. Again, as always, if we share more, we're going to be able to give more, help each other more. And of course, if you do want that particular help and if you feel that this is the time where you'd like to have somebody assist you with that, Feel free to reach out to Carol or myself. We'll happily have a conversation and we'll see if we can create a path to help you along that journey or your organization. That's it from me. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye for now.